Hi everyone and welcome back to Closet Conversations. I'm so glad to have you here this week. I'm Gianna. I am your Closet Conversationalist and I put out videos on Mondays and Fridays. On Mondays is Mommy Mondays. We talk about Mommy Magic, Mommy Madness, Mommy Mayhem. And on Fridays I do Closet Conversations where we're leaning into luxury of late. And so we talk about luxury, art, fashion, uh, closet you know, we'll make it, you know, entrance because that's how we started. So closet solutions, etc. Um, but we just let the conversation go wherever it takes us. And if you like that sort of a thing, if you like getting chatty, please go ahead and subscribe. Please comment down below and like join the conversation. That's what it's about. And if you know someone who would like this content, please go ahead and share it with them. Please go ahead and like this video if you like it. If you don't, comment down below and tell me why not. And uh, let's get into it. So this week, we're in the third week now of uh, the Pochette Edition, right? So the Pochette Edition matters um, because, uh, you know, I've been talking about Louis Vuitton and like luxury and that sort of a thing. and. The history of the speedy like was very well received by my viewers so i'd like to go ahead and cover the pochette because there's pochette this there's pochette that there's pochette 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 and people don't know what they are or what the difference is between them so i figured i'd help out now today i'm going to start with the pochette matisse i have covered so far just to recap we've covered the pochette accessoire the pochette the mini pochette accessoire, the micro pochette, the pochette voyage, the pochette felicie, and now we're on the pochette matisse. And I am going to just put it out there right now. I don't even know why they came up with this as a pochette matisse. Um, maybe I should look up some French to figure out the matisse part, but um, if you speak French, go ahead and comment down below what the Matisse part is. Pochette, as we've been saying before, is a pouch. <sighs> this could loosely be considered a pouch, I suppose. But then every bag could be considered a pouch then if it closes, I would imagine. Um, so I don't know. I think this is very loose in the Pochette region, but it is called Pochette Matisse. So we're going to cover it in the Pochettes. Now, I wish I knew the year this one came out. If you know, go ahead and um, comment down below. This one is a limited edition version. This particular one came out in 2017. Um, yeah. And it is, it's, it's like a briefcase style bag. So, um... It has a zip pocket in the back and a top handle and three compartments inside. That's the strap for it because it comes with a strap. It has two exterior D-rings that you can attach it to if you want to wear the strap. You can, you're can. you free to wear it without it because it has a top handle. It has a zipper on the back. I don't know if I covered that, but right. And inside it has three open compartments, one very small one in the back and a very roomy one in the front, in the middle. And then in the front, it also has one that expands because of gussets in the side, right? So it's a roomy bag. I really do like this bag. I'm not gonna tell any lies. I love traveling with it. I love that it is structured enough and compact enough that you look very, very pulled together when you're wearing it. Um, and you can fit a lot without it looking too bulky and too over the top. It does get full though. Um, but it still looks structured. This one is a limited edition one. It's called the Brogue. I love the Brogue because the Brogue, uh, besides its versatility from all the colors that are involved, it incorporated the leather it incorporated the reverse and the classic monogram. So basically you got the best of quite a few worlds with it still being a show-stopping look. And it is uh, D 
different enough um, but still stays true to the house so I love this bag um, but in terms of a pouch I don't know that I would consider it a pouch but it is a pochette and we did uh, it was it is worthy of being covered on that basis do you know that I've lost my <laughs> I've lost my uh, my tape measure again I wanted to give you some measurements oh here it is I wanted to give you some measurements on it so that you at least know what size it is so it's a nine and a half across and up and down is probably seven and a half is what we'd end up at right so seven and a half nine and a half across seven and a half up and down now the reason this matters now for a long time it was just this one is the pochette matisse but now they've come out with the pochette matisse east west and there's a Matisse Hobo, I believe. But that's not a pochette, so that shouldn't be considered that. But the East West is a smaller version of this. Like it's East West. So I think they just cut it shorter and it might be the same length across. But don't quote me on that. I do not own an East West. Um I saw it recently in well, it comes in monogram, right? But it also comes in uh, the Mana Glam collection that came out. That's kind of that iridescent. One was on navy and denim, and one was on like a. No, I think they only did the east, west, and the navy and denim. Anyhow, that one looked pretty, pretty, pretty interesting, and it piqued my interest. But um, I don't think the price had piqued my interest. I think that was part of the the. Either the price or the size and the price together. Because I'm someone that is like, when some things seem overpriced, like to normal people, I will still buy it if I can justify it in my own mind. So how I justify things is like, okay, where's the value in it? So is it value for money on the basis of what I can do with it? what I can fit in it, where I would wear it, you know, all of that. How many uses will I get? Um, how will it stand up over time? Will I get tired of it easily? Can I wear it with a lot of things? You know, like those are the things that go through my mind. So whatever had gone through my mind made me kind of not look at it any longer. Um, so there's that. Now to wrap up this whole series, I have my collection of pochette kirigami. So I have four. This was not to happen. This was not the, what do you call that? The mission, the intention, the intention. This is not the intention to have four of anything of one kind. Um, I have three Neverfuls. I have three Pochette Accessoires. I have three mini Pochettes. Uh, I don't have four of anything. Um, I don't have four of anything. I think I may end up with a fourth ne Neverfull um, soon because I'm looking at a vintage piece only because I really did like the print and I have three Neverfull MMs and I'm looking for a Neverfull GM but obviously I don't want it in the basic monogram or Damier or anything like that like I want something a print that I love so I'm looking at something and I'm gonna see if I can get it pre-owned if I can't I'll probably try to figure out something for a larger tote because the thing about the Neverfull okay so the pros about the Neverfull GM is that it would be big enough to carry like my laptop in it and all the stuff that I carry every day plus I want to be able to throw lyric stuff in there when I need to bring a water bottle for him bring some toys bring whatever in the bag too 
So in order to do that, I want the GM. Now, my one issue with the GM is that it doesn't close. You know, well, all the never folds. They don't close. So that's the only thing. But I love the print enough. I love the artist enough. And I think it's collectible enough that I may just overlook the non-closure part. Um, because it'll serve the purpose that I need it for. But um, I haven't done it yet. So when I do, I will let you know. But that would be the only thing I'd have four of. And the interesting thing is it would still wouldn't be four of the same, same thing. It would be three mm and one gm this is four of the same thing and that was not the intention at any point in time so my first one okay so my first one i was influenced on because i thought it was so versatile and i was like oh my god like this is cool and it's a well-priced product from louis and I can find things to do with it and because I don't like to commit to any one thing this is like the best thing since sliced bread because you don't have to you can figure it all out right so I got it in classic because classic is timeless and this is a Valentine's Day gift from Johnny to me like the year that it came out and it was it was kind of just a no-brainer it was like and so we got them initialed they were supposed to have jn for my husband for johnny so jn heart gf but it was in the las vegas store that they were being hot hot stamped and it was a guy doing it and i don't know if the guy was new or what but he burnt straight through the first one so he had to replace it like immediately like he had to pull another one from stock so because of that I was just like mm, let's not make it too hard for him let's just let him do that because then he'd have to line up the heart in between them and what so I was like mm. so I'll just keep it simple as my initials because that should be easy enough for him and so that's what happened there but you know they can do a bunch of things so they could have done the JN heart GF but but not him he couldn't so anyway, the Kirigami pochette comes with three Kirigami pochettes. So it's a small, so this would be the PM, this would be the MM, and this would be the GM. So it's, and they're meant to be like Russian dolls or Kirigami in Japanese, I would imagine. And they fit right in together right so I felt like this is classic this is timeless I can use this forever it's you know like like our love it's classic and timeless and so I said I was gonna this would be a lovely Valentine's present and I could use it and because I started to decide that I could accept some basic monogram pieces at the time I was like you know this will be good and it's simple and it's you know classic just go run go to the store whatever it's understated understated as far as those let's go right so this was the first one that I got and I was you know content but I never used it because remember I'm not so into the plain monogram so because I never used it, but of course you hot stamp it, so you can't do nothing with it after that. Um, so then, 2020 came, we were in COVID, and it was early in the year, and we were in lockdown. And I did not know that COVID would have lasted as long as it did. So in my boredom, I went ahead and I ordered this. Because I had a bag this same color, uh, what do you call it, color story, color combination. I had a bag in denim in this very color combination when I was like eight years old. And maybe I was younger. Maybe I was younger. But the memory is very clear. 
my grandmother used to work in bird eyes. I don't know if you know you guys know anything. I'm gonna give you fashion history right now, guys. Birdines is the Florida store. And there has been no other Florida store. So even though Birdines is no longer, Birdines is still the Florida store. So Birdines was the, the department store of Florida. If you went to Flo anywhere in Florida. Now, most of the locations where Birdines was is Macy's because at some point, Federated Department Stores, which owns Macy's, had bought Birdines. And then they had changed them to Birdine's Macy's. So it was two Birdine's Macy's, like a partnership. And then they took off the Birdine's and lock it down. And now, and then it was just Macy's. And then they closed a lot of the Birdine's Macy's and just have Macy's, right? So anyway. But my grandmother worked at Birdine's. She worked there for 29 years. If she had stayed till 30 years, she'd have gotten a lifetime discount. Why did she leave at 29 years? Do not ask me, I don't know. Anyway, it was her side hustle, by the way. My grandmother was a boss, a boss. She was um, a bookkeeper by day, all about that money. Talk about that Jew in her, right? So, she was a bookkeeper by day, and in the evenings after she'd leave bookkeeping, she would go and work at Birdine's. Her one evening off was on Wednesdays, and she would pick up me from school, <laughs> and she'd take us. She, she'd take me to Publix so I could choose my dessert, choose some cold cuts for the week, um, and we'd go home to her house, and we would. Uh, she had trees in her backyard, avocado that she loved, and she also loved uh, gungo peas. She had gungo peas back there too. And so she'd have like a big thing of peas waiting for me to like shell while she was cooking dinner. And we'd shell, I'd shell the peas and that would be for the next night's dinner or whichever other night dinner, but she'd have been cooking already tonight's dinner. And then we'd share like an almond horn or something for dessert that we had just bought at Publix. And the next morning I'd get up and I'd have my bagel and cream cheese and turkey salami because that turkey salami we just bought. And then I'd get a sandwich for lunch that had pepper jack cheese because we got the pepper jack cheese from Publix. Listen, it was a very nice experience. You hear? It was very, very wholesome. Anyhow. My grandmother worked at Birdine's. We went to visit her at Birdine's one evening when I had my bag that had this whole color combination, my denim. And I've been a bag lady since birth. This is something you should know about me. Um, so when I talk about my bag collection, like don't think it's like a new thing. Don't think it's like a just the other day thing. Don't think it's a status thing. Don't think it's a me showing off thing. It is a passion, a love affair, a... Uh, obsession since I was born my first bag was given to me by my auntie June shout out to auntie June it was this little thing I didn't know what to put in it why because I used to always put uh, it was a round bag by the way too but I didn't know what to put in it because what I used to put in my bags was my cheese tricks cheese tricks for those in other countries are cheese curls but it was cheese tricks because it was mostly in Jamaica that I'd have to put my stuff, you know, I needed to walk with my candy and my cheese tricks. And that's what my handbags held. Anyhow, in Florida, my handbags held the kitchen sink, my markers, my crayons, and my everything, everything, any toys, everything that I could think of went into that handbag. Now, my denim bag, it was like a shoulder bag. I'm picturing it right now, you know, I don't know how old I was. It was definitely under seven, under eight, under seven, eight. I don't know. But we went to visit my grandma at Birdine's the night and she made me try on some clothes in Oshkosh because she loved to buy Oshkosh for me. And um, I put down my bag. I put down my bag in the fitting room. The bag had these colors. When I got home, I realized that I didn't have my bag. And I went to my mother and I said, oh my God, I left my bag. And she said, you left your bag? 
And I said, yes. Can you call them and tell them? And she said, no. She said, you can't leave your bag anywhere. And I don't know who probably walked off with your bag by now. So no, you just lost your bag. I'm still a little cut up by that. I'm not gonna tell you any lies. It's very painful. <laughs> Especially because I'm the kind of person now that if anything happens in any store, I'm quick to call and say, can you this, can you that? And normally people are very nice. Imagine it was a store that my grandma worked in. My grandma probably could have picked it up for me. Anyway, I guess my mother was teaching me a lesson. One of many. All her lessons are like that. They've all been painful. But anyway, I digress. Here we go. So when I saw these colors and I'm in lockdown in, you know, COVID, I was just like, oh my God, I got the chance to at least have back my bag, even though it's a different everything. But ah! so I bought it. And then it gave me multiple options. So I didn't have to just stick to the bag that had a little trauma in it. I got this navy blue kind of tie dye. Then I got this one. And this is my favorite color combination of all time, pink, purple, and red. So I was just like, oh my God, this is gonna be great. So I have those, right? And I'm having two kirigamis, and that's enough for me. Like, who needs more than two? Am I actually going to use them? Well, I ended up using this one quite a bit, actually. But am I actually going to use them? Okay, I don't know. So, and then it has a silver button on this one versus the gold on the other one. But then I got a silver chain, and I got an insert for it, and I could wear it as a crossbody, and life was good. I didn't need any more. Did I? <laughs> then 2022 comes and you know, I had just given birth late in 2021 and I'm just looking around with my son in the design district and I see this one and I'm like, This one is beautiful. It is just like an airbrush effect of ombre and all sorts of craziness going on. And I'm just like, okay, if I had the chance to trade the other two for this one, this would be the one. So if this one is the one, and then they go and tell me, oh, it's the last one in the country or something like that. Like it's the last, like you could only order and there was only one left in the whole country. So I was just like, oh, come on. And then the issue with this one was that as much as I loved this one, I was in love with this one too. And this one. So I was just like, hold on, wait, what? What? I love every single print more than the last. I, I was like, okay, in real life, I should have held out for this one. And this would have been my only one. And I'd have been good. I would have really been good. Um, but I hadn't held out. And there was no one to tell me that this was ever going to come about. So as much as this is my favorite one, and yes, I have favorites. It's just how it works. Um... I had to have this one. This one I had to have. So I end up with this one. Um, they had so many bags of that collection in different prints and stuff. But I couldn't buy a bag. Like you can't buy all the prints of bags. So this was the best bet to get all three prints. You know, at least you have them. And then Yayoi Kusama came around. 
And I tried to influence everybody on getting hers. And ended up influencing myself. And this one is leather, right? So it works, right? And this one has all the prints that were in bags as well. And we weren't going to buy all the bags. So this one is simple. This one was great bang for the buck based on it being leather because it ended up only being like maybe $80 more than the one before it. It was cheap. I mean, none of these things are cheap, but you know, it was relatively cheap for what it is in terms of you expect it to be so much more because it's leather, right? So then you end up with this one and you're like, okay. So the intention again was never to have four. It was to have one. And then these people over at Louis Vuitton just kind of keep going with this thing. Making you get things that you don't need. So in real life, nobody needs four Kirigami push-ups. If you have one or two, though, I don't judge you because one I think is necessary because of the different sizes and the amount of things that you can do with one. Like, you really can. You can use this as a clutch. You can use this as an iPad cover. You can use it um, for toiletries. You can, Because you can wipe inside its leather. Um, you can use it uh, for documents, like smaller documents. If you have a little notebook, you can. there's stuff you can use this for. And then for this one, this fits... Um, it fits, I think, up to five passports. Um, mine are double page passports, though, because I travel a lot. So it only fits like two, two and a normal size passport. So, um, yeah, you can fit uh, toiletries again in this one. It can be a catch all like this one is really versatile. And then this little small one is mighty. People use it for business cards. People use it for credit cards. People use it for um, lip lip things, chapstick, lipsticks, um, any sort of minis of any kind. You can still, I have an insert in there that I can put a chain on because remember I said I like micro bags to hang around my neck. So I can put it like a necklace um, and just have something small in there. You know, your gum or whatever. Um, you want little things, little things. You know, in Jamaica, you can put other little, little things in there. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so these are very versatile. So I would say yes, definitely one. Uh, if you have two, I won't judge. But listen, four is out of control. Four is not necessary. And it was never my intention to have four. But since I have the four, I'm going to love up the four and use them every time I, ch I get a chance to um, with my different outfits and how I can coordinate them because I already have them. And if I were to get rid of one, I tell you, honestly, honestly, right now, it would likely be the basic monogram one. But because I hot stamped that, that would be a very difficult sell, especially because it's a classic and always available. So people could buy a new one. So why would they buy the hot stamped one that has my name in it? So that one, plus it was a Valentine's gift, so I shouldn't get rid of it. But then the other one that I'd probably get rid of is the trauma one. <laughs> The one that reminds me of the bag that I lost as a little girl. Um, but every time that thought comes across my mind, um, I end up finding a use for one of the other ones, like the, the Navy or whichever. Like something, something in there, I end up using it. As soon as I say, you know, I really don't need this one. Like I could get rid of it. And then I'll wear something that matches it. And then I'm like, well, I don't have anything else in this color though. So... Mm, 
I can't really get rid of it. So then I'm just like, okay, well, we're going to love up the collection. So if we love up the collection, though, we need to love it up and use it instead of looking at other things. So this video has gone on too long anyway. So thank you for joining me. Have a great week. Subscribe, like, share, and I hope you enjoyed our Pachette edition. And I'll see you next week.